Hi, my name is Davian Cherbu, and I'm a rising junior at Rutgers University studying mechanical engineering. My project this past summer was a supersonic laminar flow boundary layer analysis, and my advisor is Professor Demaro. So with the increase in importance of high-speed aircraft, it is necessary to study the aerodynamics of various supersonic flow situations. So we chose a hemisphere because that's a pretty common geometry found on many planes and other aircraft. So because of COVID-19, this hemisphere study had to be carried out virtually. So we chose ANSYS Fluent, which is a fluid simulation software. And I modeled the Emil Bueller supersonic wind tunnel at Rutgers. So the particular focus of the study was about the boundary layer profile of the hemisphere model and a laminar flow. The geometry consists of two parts, which was a flat plate portion as well as the hemisphere. And this summer, I really focused in on the flat plate portion to model the boundary layer of that part using the wind tunnel conditions. And I created a velocity contour and a boundary layer profile. The boundary layer pro profile was then compared with the Blasha solution and determined to be a good representation of it. So the flow over this domain is a laminar flow. So the fluid particles travel in a smooth path. Due to the viscosity of the flow being laminar, a boundary layer is expected to form along the floor and the hemisphere. So the boundary layer is essentially fluid that clings to the surface, and as the height of the fluid above the surface increases, the fluid speed increases until it eventually reaches the free stream velocity. So the boundary layer profile is a graph of the height in the y direction versus the ratio of the velocity in the x direction to the free stream velocity. So the Blasha solution, which I mentioned earlier, accurately depicts the boundary layer over the flat plate. The profile curves up towards one and forms an asymptote at one. So here you see the Blasha solution graph and we can see the curve um, curving upwards and becoming asymptotic at one, which is where the velocity reaches the free stream velocity. So in order to arrive at a boundary layer result using ANSYS Fluent, there are multiple steps that I had to follow. So first I had to create the geometry, then I had to make the mesh, and then I had to input a physics setup for the solution. So first I created a 2D geometry, and this is the geometry of the hemisphere, um, as well as like the whole wind tunnel model within this geometry. And this is the portion that I studied first, which is the flat plate portion in front of the hemisphere. And this was a 0.1 by 0.1 meter square. And the meshing was done in such a way that there was a high concentration of cells that border the floor, which is where the boundary layer is expected to be seen. And to achieve this, I used the inflation setting. And the inflation setting basically creates a bunch of layers wherever it's designated. And I chose to use 35 layers. I used the growth rate of 1.2 and the total boundary layer thickness of 0.016 meters, which are values from the wind tunnel itself. And the size of each element cell was set to 0.0009 meters to give the mesh further refinement so that I could make it as accurate as possible. And here's the mesh. So for the physics setup of the problem, I used a pressure-based solver and I set the top and left edge to velocity inlets because that's where the flow is entering, as you can see with these blue arrows. And I set both of those to 626.3 meters per second, which corresponds to Mach 3.4, which is the speed of the free stream in the wind tunnel. And the right edge here, um, I set to a pressure outlet because that's where the flow is exiting as modeled by these red arrows. And the fluid of the entire domain, this square, the flat plate, was set to air. And I set the viscosity to laminar. And with these steps, a solution converged and I was able to create a boundary layer profile and the velocity contour. So here is the velocity contour, which is basically a visual representation of the change in velocity within the boundary layer. And this is a close up because if I showed the whole thing, the boundary layer was pretty thin and you couldn't see it too well. So this here is the boundary layer profile. So I created that from the flat plate and that did um, represent the expected results based on the Blasha solution. As I mentioned in the background section, the Blasha solution shows the boundary layer thickness versus the ratio of the velocity at a certain point within the boundary layer to the free stream velocity. And here we see that the asymptote is at the expected location, which is x equals one. And each curve here corresponds with a different x value on the flat plate domain. So I used 0.025 meters, 0.05 meters, 0.075 meters, and 0.1 meters. So approximately a quarter, a half, three quarters, and the full length here. And also as supported by the Blasha solution, as the x value on the domain increases, so as I'm modeling the quarter, half, three quarters, um, the y-axis value, which is the higher boundary layer thickness, 
is more than the previous, which is also expected. So this red line here is the 0.025 meters. This is the 0.05 meters and so on. And each one that is farther along in the plate is higher up than the previous curve. So the next steps of this project involve resolving the boundary layer over the hemisphere itself. And then those results will be confirmed for accuracy using the boundary layer profile and comparing that to the Blasch solution again. Thank you so much. And I hope you enjoyed this presentation.